How's everybody doing today? Welcome back for section 10.6 in circles, which is finding segment lengths in circles. Now we're going to have a little conversation here between triangle and circle. And in any conversation, a circle is going to give a response, so we'll find out more about that later. In fact, I think there might be a little smackdown going on here between these two shapes, but more on that later. First, we'll take a look at some theorems and equations related to chord secants and tangents. First thing I want to do is take a look at the two intersecting chords. That whole piece is a chord. And what I'm going to do is take a look at those two parts, each part of that chord. So from C to E and E to D and more on that later. And then my other chord is going to be AB. And AB, one part of it is going to be from A to E. And another part is going to be from E to B. Now with that said, let's take a look and put those pieces, those words, part times part equals part times part, Let's put that into an equation based on that diagram. So here's that equation. EA times EB is going to equal EC times ED. Now, either way you write that, you could write EA or AE either way, but you're taking the parts, the pieces of each one of those chords and splitting them and multiplying them together. Their products are going to be the same. So check this out. Let's go ahead and get right into our example. Now, a little note about this. This starts out with example number 5, and that's because it's a continuation from section 10.3, which, which ended with example number 4. So we're breaking that up into two videos. Here we go. Now, what I want you to do first is highlight the different parts. we got part times part, so that's one piece right there, and that's one piece right there. And then my other part, so the other chord, chord KJ, is going to go from K to that intersection spot and then from there over. So that's going to be, that's going to kind of help me get that set up. Now we can kind of easily see part times part equals part times part. Well one part is going to be this x plus 4 piece in the x and my other parts of the other chord that's going to be this x plus 2 and the x plus 1. So once I've got all of that figured out the rest is pretty 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 straightforward. So just take your time do your arithmetic right? So we're going to go ahead and get that set up. Now highlighters help because in that way you can really see what's going on. So I have the quantity x plus 2 times the quantity x plus 1 equals x times x plus 4. So when you do that just be careful make sure that you do your distributive property correctly on that. So we'll end up with x squared plus 3x plus 1 on the left, x squared plus 4x on the right. Now if you subtract the x squareds from both sides, right, they are going to cancel out. So when you do that, when they cancel out, you're just going to have 3x plus 1 equals 4x. Because right, we're doing this one step at a time. We're showing our work, we're justifying our, our reasoning, and we're just taking our time to make sure we don't mess up. Don't try and do all this in your head, because that's crazy talk. Subtract 3x from both sides, I just get 1 for the value of x. And I'm done, right? Psych! You are not done, fool. Check this out right here. We said, oh, let's find ml and jk. So we've got to take that, and we've got to put the value of x back in to find each one of those values. So take your time and do that and do it correctly. Then see what you got. Hopefully you came up with ML has a length of 5 and JK has a length of 6. So don't be all foolish and be like I got X I'm done peace out yo. Nah. Make sure that you go back and you answer the question fool because a lot of people get so excited they got X they forget to go back and answer the question. So don't be that guy. Or that girl. That's one theorem we're going to play with. Now we're going to play with another one. This one's going to look a lot more complex. Check this out. Now this one has to deal with either the secant or the tangent. Now we could have two secants or we could have a tangent and a secant. Now these parts are going to be given two different names. We're going to have an outside and we're going to have entire. So check this out. We're going to do the outside, so one of my colors is going to be from E to A. And then also over here, I'm going to use that same color over here, E to A, because that's both on the outside. Now, the entire part of that segment, of each one of those segments, I'm going to have from E all the way to B. That's going to be that entire. Now, E, A, this tangent over here, that segment is going to be the same length right there. So that's one piece, the outside entire, that's the part on the left side. Now on the right side, I'm going to have 
the other, another outside, so from E all the way to C. So that piece, and E to C again over on the right-hand diagram, and then the entire thing is going to be from E all the way out to D, and then from E all the way out to D again. So that's going to be what's kind of going on picture-wise and word-wise, but we're going to fill in two different equations based on the way we've got those pictures marked. So now on the left-hand side, we're going to have EA times EB equals EC times ED. No big deal there. But on the right-hand side for our tangent and secant, when we have that kind of intersection going on, check this out. You're going to have EA squared. You're going to have the tangent, whatever that letters are going to represent that or whatever term or variables or whatever. You're going to have that piece squared and then the other part, the secant, same thing, just chop it up that way. The outside part, EC, times the entire thing, ED. So a lot of people sometimes struggle with that, but no big deal. You'll be good because you'll be highlighting everything and rocking through all of this piece. Now let's go ahead and take a look at an example to kind of play with this. Now we've got outside times entire equals outside times entire. So what I want you to do is go ahead and get everything highlighted the same way I do. So when we fill this out, we'll be looking at the same kind of thing. Now, first thing, we're going to take it. Now, some people might be able to do the 4 plus 5 part in their head, but you're going to have 4 times the quantity 4 plus 5 equals 3 times the quantity 3 plus x. So that's outside and entire for each secant. Now the 4 plus 5, yeah, that gives us 9. No big deal there. So some people might be able to go right to that step, and that's pretty good. Check this out on the next one, and 4 times 9, 36. Now using the distributive property, you end up with 9 plus 3x. From here, no big deal. Just move that 9 over by subtracting 9 on both sides. Using your subtraction property of equality, you get 27 equals 3x. Dividing, you end up with 9 equals x. So were we done? All we were asked to do was find the value of x value of x is 9 so that's it we're done piece out of this question not too hard but again just take your time make sure that you set up your problem correctly all right now after those two examples I think you guys are okay you could probably do these two on your own Now I'm not going to tell you which one which formulas to use but you can use those in your notes or what you have written down there and you can go ahead and get after these now I've already highlighted everything so when we go through and you take a look at the work that I show you guys it should look like what you have so go ahead and hit pause, try these two on your own, and when you're ready, come on back and check it out. All right, for number seven, hopefully you came up with a value of 13 for x. Just take your time, make sure you set everything up correctly, and you're good to go. For number eight, you should have ended up with a value of x equals eight. So there you go. That's how you do those two problems. Pretty, pretty, pretty straightforward. Hopefully you got those two correct. Now on the next one, check out example nine. We've got three more examples to do for this one and this one you guys should probably be okay with it I'm not too worried about it but I want you to make sure you go ahead and this one's gonna throw you a little bit of a monkey wrench so check this out we'll kinda of go through this piece together now this first part the outside is going to be this piece right here and then the entire thing for my tangent is going to be that X again alright so I'm gonna have that piece right there and then the outside of my secant outside of the secant well that's just going to be this one right here and the entire thing we can kind of do that part in our, in our head we know that entire thing is going to be four so here would be our setup on this one no big deal so when we multiply the x and the x together that's going to give us x squared and one times the one plus three which is just four that's going to give us now here's where you have to be really really careful and most of you guys probably already know this when you want to solve for x squared you want to square root both sides now don't forget because this is going to come in a lot next year or whenever you take an algebra 2 course you're going to have to do the plus or minus the square root of 4 square root of 4 is just 2 so you're going to have either x equals negative 2 or x equals positive 2 because positive square root or negative square root so plus or minus so one gives you negative 2 or positive 2 now in geometry what you have to do is take a look at the context of the problem where the value of x is is this tangent piece right up here so that length can't be negative so our only solution is going to be x equals 2 x equals negative 2 is what is called a extraneous solution so write that word down or say that a couple times to yourself because you're going to use that a lot in your next level of algebra course so an extraneous solution means we get an answer to a problem 
but that answer doesn't fit into the context of the problem which is what happens here in number nine so our only solution is x equals two now in example ten this one is going to kind of involve that same situation so go ahead and get your highlights on take care of doing this one totally on your own hopefully you'll come with the same value of x that i do all right how'd you do on this one hopefully you came up with 4.8 for the value of x and your work is just as nice and neat and organized as it's shown right here so make sure you take your time do your arithmetic correctly boom you got it no big deal all right so you guys have hung in here we go with our last example example number 11 we're going to go through and we're going to do this one together same kind of stuff as before outside times entire equals outside times entire no big deal but we're going to run into something a little different here check it out We'll set up our equation, no big deal. I think you guys will be rock solid on that piece. But when we distribute this time, we end up with 144 equals x squared plus 10x. So with this type of problem, what you want to do is get, when you have a squared on one side, you want to get the other side set equal to 0. So what that means is we're going to subtract 144 from both sides. When you do that, you'll end up with 0 on the left, and then x squared plus 10x minus 144 on the right hand side. Now from here you're going to have to factor the right hand side. So I need two numbers that multiply together to give me negative 144 but have a sum of 10. You play around with that for a little bit, use whatever skills or mad math stuff that you got going on, you'll figure it out. When you do you'll get one factor is going to be x plus 18 and the other factor is going to be x minus 8. Now if you were to use the distributive property twice or a lot of teachers will call that FOIL with x plus 18 times quantity x minus 8 you'd end up with a previous step. Now from here this is where you're going to have to do a little bit more work and take each one of these factors and you're just going to set each one of them equal to 0. Solving from here is going to be a piece of cake for you guys no big deal but that's how you're going to solve this type of problem. So when you subtract 18 on the left one, you'll end up with x equals negative 18, or on the right hand side, you'll get x equals 8. Now, one of these two is your solution, and one of them is an extraneous solution. And I think by now you can probably see what, which one it is for that. And you got it. x equals 8 is going to be the only solution. So this problem's a little bit different. It might take you a little bit to kind of see everything on that one and go through that most people will struggle with the factoring piece so you might have to work on your factoring skills to get that down now we had our crazy talk going on here between the triangle and the circle so let's get back in on this conversation check it out and it's going to be a smackdown so i'm a piece out of here check it triangle says your life seems so pointless circle not taking that circle says well at least i'm well rounded booyah he's done i'm done we're out of here you guys have a great day hope you enjoyed this one and I'll catch up with you later. Peace.